Good afternoon, greater Philadelphia area. This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB, 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacey Mitchell. She's Sarah Time, and We've got Nick behind the camera, and we all work at the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline. The number one REMAX team in Pennsylvania since 2018, number 11 in the country. And we're streaming live every single week on Facebook YouTube and Instagram, just look up Tom Tool Sales Group, and we'll uh, make sure to post a link to the live stream here. So we've got a lot to cover this week, more housing market news, a very interesting jobs report, which we'll get to in a second. The CEO of United Wholesale Mortgage, she's also the owner of the Phoenix Suns, Matt Ashibia, or Ishbia, I don't, Nick, maybe you know how to pronounce that. I don't. He uh, has a loser mentality he wants to talk about, which I'm really excited to chat about there. And portal wars going on in real estate. But first, let's start with the market. So, uh, another interesting week. Uh, we saw that over the past week, inventory grew by about 3,100 homes, 3,180 to be specific. Um, we saw mortgage rates jump up to. 7%. They kind of came down a little bit and then went back up uh, after after the the um, the debt ceiling issue. Uh, purchase application data had its third straight week of negative data. And then we had this jobs report. And the jobs report kind of complicated things. So what are you guys seeing in the market first? Are you, are you feeling this bump in inventory? Are you kind of able to identify that, Stacey and Sarah? Are your clients seeing it? Let's talk about that first because this has been one of the top two or three talking points since we started the show about the current market? I mean, I I feel as though I've noticed um, a bit of inventory being there. I mean, sometimes you do have to, as in, as in any case in any market, if you're too specific about, like, I can only be on this street or it mm-hmm. has to be exactly this way, like, you're going to be waiting for things to come up. Um, but I've, as I'm checking, like, every day to see what new has, has come up and hit, like, things are, things are coming, I felt. I think so too. When when I jump into the MLS system and it it seems like there's a lot more to choose yeah. from. It doesn't mean they're staying on very long, right. but there's <laughs> there's more inventory. I think the uh, my clients are are taking notice too. Uh, so that's a positive um, about the interest rates. Uh, I know that there was some concern from some of my folks about when it was at seven. Um, yeah. So they had some reservations about that, hoping that they would, you know, drop a little bit. Uh, it, it kind of, there was a general consensus that it was because of all the hubbub about the, um, you know, the debt ceiling being raised and, and, you know, our government coming to terms to some type of an agreement. And now that's kind of in the rear view mirror that I, I believe that they, you know, were able to come mm-hmm. to an agreement they wrapped it up. So, uh, the jobs report, I mean, our unemployment rate is really low for the most part. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. did take up a little bit, but there's some uh, portions of industry that are higher, uh, that are growing. So where some aspects of the job market they're laying off, there's other aspects that are booming. So it's it's kind of balancing itself out. But that poses a problem for the Fed. But, you know, we'll see what they decide to do. Yeah, I, mean, I, I hate this idea that you're trying to drive unemployment up, and that's just me fundamentally as someone that doesn't want to see people lose their jobs. Um, inventory, we're seeing this bump nationally. We also saw it locally. So the past seven days, and this is as, a, this is as much up to the minute data as we can get, we saw 227 coming soon listings, 527 new active, and 74 back to active in the metro Philadelphia area. This is in Pennsylvania. That's north of 800. We have not seen many weeks where we've gotten north of 800. And the back to active is as much of an opportunity as Mm -hmm. the coming soon or the new active because people have usually lost out on those properties. So seeing 800 plus, like there's been weeks where it's been like 500, Mm -hmm. 600. So 800 plus, we've very rarely broken through that threshold. And I'm a big believer, we just talked about this, that we're going to see a second half of the year market because you got seven working months left in the year, but you really got like, five and a half or six because once December hits and nothing's going to close until 2024 anyway, for the agents and the consumers that are listening, I would not take my foot off the gas right now. We did some uh, data in terms of percentage of homes that were under contract 
through the end of June in 2021 versus through the end of June in 2022. We, we just went over this earlier today at our, our monthly team meeting. And historically, the number trends right around 60%. In 2022, we were at uh, over 65% of the year was booked by the end of June. In 2021, it was 53% and change. So that tells me, look at, do the, do the market conditions feel like 2021 right now? Like multiple it, offers, oh, yeah. aggressive. Yeah, I'm talking oh, yes. like yeah, pe- like high intent. The mm-hmm. market's not slowing down. This time last year, the conversation was what's going to happen in the second half. People started talking about the housing market crash, which isn't coming. Spoiler alert for everybody. There, there's no way that that happens. So looking at some of this data here and seeing where this new listing data is trending, I am cautiously optimistic for people that want to transact. Now, you're going to get these buyers that say, well, I want rates to come down, right? So I saw Jeff Mays, our, our team coach, speak yesterday. He reminded me of something important. You know what it took for rates to go into the threes? The pandemic. pandemic. A global <laughs> pandemic, right? A global pandemic that I don't want to see that happen again. Do you right. want to? Uh, yeah. No. Hard, hard no. no. Hard so. no. no. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of what the market has been like. Now, I think we, there, there's this question about the, the spread between the 10-year Treasury bill and where rates actually are, which we can kind of get into a little bit. And I think that has to do with this jobs report. I'm cautiously optimistic here for people that just want to buy a home. Forget timing it. Forget getting the best price. For, forget you know all, all these things that people try to do. Getting a house you want to live in, right. that, if that's your objective – there's going to be opportunity for you in the second half of 2023. What do you two think? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, I think that if you if you're motivated and the numbers work and and this is a place you want to get into, like holding out for conditions to change is not going to work in your favor. Um, something else will be going on. There will be another condition there of mm-hmm. what makes it unfavorable for you. You know, like there's it's we're not going to see some full swing where it goes completely to a buyer's market unless if you're looking like in 10 years, I want to buy a house. And then in that case, then like probably don't buy one now if you don't need one for 10 years, you know. Um, so, you know, I think that you just have to like have those conversations of what makes sense and what doesn't. Um, I think that when you combine both the, you know, coming soon, the newly active and those back to back to market, those are You've got opportunities there, especially with the ones that come back to mm-hmm. market, because there's also going to be people that without even further looking into it are going to assume there was some issue with the house mm-hmm. when really it could have been, well, rates went up and now maybe the buyer, like something fell through somewhere else. Like it doesn't have to mean that there was some huge issue with the home. So that's where you've got so much potential if you can get in there quick right away um, and get right on it. The sellers are going to be relieved that they're back under contract again, um, and it might not be on some people's radar. So, yeah, yeah. there's definitely opportunity mm-hmm. with those mm-hmm. back to actives. Yeah, and honestly, if if you're waiting for some kind of mega drop in the interest rates, it's not going to happen. So I, when people say they're waiting for rates to drop, I have to ask them, well, f- for how far? Like, yeah, what right. are you waiting for? them to drop too. Right. And again, with the pricing, what are you waiting for the housing prices to drop? Right. To what? To what level? Right. Buy $100,000 and that's not going to happen. Right. Um, well, and that's not good for anybody. If right. You, like, no. That's exactly. not good. <laughs> I've been through that, right? I mean, when you're sitting at someone's kitchen table, prices are declining, rates may be low, sure, and people are worried about losing their jobs, which is kind of, which is what the 2008 to 2012 real estate market was like. It's the most difficult conversation I've ever had. And and people, I mean, and you're having to really cancel these folks. Like, hey, it's it's, it's going to get worse. Like, it's not going to get better. So nobody wants that to happen. I, I, I agree with you more. Real estate wins over the long term anyway. So it sounds like we're all in agreement of the opportunity coming up in the second half of the year for consumers mm-hmm. and for agents. Let's talk about this jobs report. So the, the Fed's got a meeting coming up in uh, next week, right? And they've already got some tough decisions to make as th- this jobs report really didn't make things any easier. So job growth surprised a lot of economists with the total um, uh, increase of 339,000 jobs compared to April. And that increase was in line with the average monthly gain of 341,000, so within 2,000 jobs. 
Uh, but as you said, Stacey, the unemployment rate ticked up to 3.7 percent compared to 3.4 percent in April. And uh, the number of people that are unemployed rose to 6.1 million. And it's, it's kind of been bouncing around in this 3.4 to 3.7 percent range since March of last year. So even though layoffs have picked up, many businesses and, and they highlight transportation, health care and hospitality. Can you continue to have strong demand for workers, according to uh, the chief economist at the Mortgage Bankers Association and you know, data earlier this week showed that the job openings in April increased uh, to over 10 million postings once again. So, I mean, we're, we're seeing that, that there's like this strength in the job market and the lion's share of the growth is coming from gains in the professional and business sectors. That's up 64,000. Leisure and hospitality, 48,000 jobs. Government sector, 56,000. And healthcare, 52. Um, so it, it's... It's kind of like, all right, well, more people aren't working, but there's more jobs. And there's a theory out that there were that that we're in this COVID catch up right now because so many jobs were lost during that time. And I think that's what's making this kind of confusing. So knowing what we know, I mean, do, do you see this affecting the decision the Fed makes at their June meeting? Is this confusing to you as a as a consumer and someone in the field? Because you wouldn't expect to see unemployment go up when jobs grow up, but that that's what happened. Do we know what number they want unemployment to be at? That's a great question. Let me look. Let me look into this here. I don't know if they had put a, an actual number on inflation. unemployment, that's, but it's the two percent right, inflation. Two percent inflation. So to get <laughs> yeah, there, I don't, I don't, yeah, they right. probably want the unemployment rate to be like six or seven percent, so people seven. stop spending money, um, which is horrible. A horrible way to go about it, right? You know, p- people lose their jobs to stop spending, and we're money. in the threes, like the mid to upper threes. So we're thinking they probably want to like double. Well, and, and what's happening is, I mean, people are still spending a lot of money right now, yeah. and you're seeing credit card usage is up. People aren't. The, the, it, it's ha- this is kind of the problem that that we're that we're running into here. Mm-hmm. But they have to. I mean, humans, right? Uh, so, like, people were pent up for years. Basically. And now, I mean, COVID was officially over in May. So, and (laughs) I know how ridiculous, but it's official. Um, So people are like, they're vacationing and they're, they're doing things. I think because people realize, you know what, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. So we have to live life. Yeah. Because we're living. Right. So we have to live life and do what we want to do. They're vacationing. They're doing things. I mean, look everywhere. The the heavy traffic. People are traveling to the shore and yeah, you know, to the mountains. Um, and I think people want to enjoy life and not right. be so stressed out about things. So that's where you know people are still out there spending money. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I think that there was an article that came out. Um, it was in Time uh, magazine earlier in the year, and they said that basically an unemployment would have to get to 7.5% maybe at, on the high end just to get inflation down to that Federal Reserve target. So I don't think that's good. I mean, seeing yeah. that many people I mean, out of aren't work. There, isn't, aren't there going to be a lot of other consequences if it jumps up to yeah. that? Like, isn't there going to have to be more, like, funding and assistance that then goes in to yeah. help – The unemployed. The unemployed. Like, right. And then, uh, you know, maybe they could get into a a different job, but it it could be less pay. They could be just taking something in between. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it would be devastating. Or racking up their credit cards. More debt. In the, like, yeah, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely something that you don't want. You don't want people to lose their jobs. Right. Just to tame the unempl- uh, the inflation rate. Right. There's many other ways. They, there's many other things, policies they could do to bring down the inflation rate, but they won't do that. Right. Like, why is it that they're so focused on just this one piece of it? Like, mm-hmm. well, they have this dual mandate. This is actually a great question. So this is an article from the St. Louis uh, Fed. So um, that the Federal Reserve has been given a dual mandate of pursuing economic goals of maximum employment and price stability. So price stability is the problem. I mean, just think about how much stuff costs right now. I mean, I, I every people are complaining about the prices of beef because yeah. it's like summertime and there's like barbecues coming up. Um, so they have these two goals of maximum employment and price stability. And price stability means the inflation remains low and stable, and that's where they got that two percent target. There's no there's no target for employment. So the the concept of maximum employment is the is the highest level of employment 
that the economy can sustain while keeping prices stable. Yeah. So with the unemployment rate where it is now, and hiring's really tough. Like I mean, I I mean we're we're bringing in new people all the time. I mean it's and especially on the side where it's uh, you guys are all ten ninety nine. We're agents, right? That that that's one way to look at it. But the the W two side, the expectations of employees right now with pay. You would be shocked if I was, and I'll share this with you off air of just some of the um, the jobs that we hire for, what the expectations are, and what people are willing to pay right now versus what, and and obviously this has to do with cost of living, where you're located, those sort of things. So, you know, measuring that concept is really hard because the level of maximum employment varies over business condition and demographics and all these other things. So, th- that's where the issue is. But at three point seven. We're still seeing it, it's not getting there. Now, there's that uh, Barry uh, uh, Star. I always get this guy's name wrong. Barry uh, Sturm. There's an, a theory. I'll get his name in a second. Um, and uh, that rental prices have not really, they don't really have good data on rental prices yet because they're typically 18 uh, months or so lagged. So um, there's, a, there's a billionaire who owns a lot of investment properties. He's saying that when you pull the rental data out, inflation will get close to 2% based on where it is right now. That's going to take some time to get that data. And it's, it's a lag indicator, right? I mean, we talk about lead and lag all the time. It's like the agent that is pumped up. They had three settlements this month. Well, mm-hmm. if you didn't have any new appointments over the past month and you didn't meet any new clients, it doesn't matter how many settlements you had, cause you're kind of screwed. And that's what we're dealing with, with the fed is they use these lag indicators. So, uh, that that's their thought process, Sarah, to answer that question yeah. for you. It's a great question. I mean, this is stuff we need to be thinking about here. So what does the Fed do? We got nine days, eight days. Let me see what the, the countdown says here. And I'll give you the stats, and then I want, want your two predictions here. Um, because we are seeing rates hold steady at 7%. So we got a meeting in seven days and 22 hours. That's That's the next meeting. Right now there is a 79.4% chance, according to CME Group, that the Fed will not raise rates and keep them stable, which to me is exactly what everyone needs right now. And my hope is that'll kind of calm down the the markets a little bit because the, the spread between the 10-year and mortgage rates is one of the highest ever. And a lot of people are saying rates should be in the fives based on where the 10-year yield's coming in. But that spread is considered a measure of risk based on the housing market because there's this uncertainty with the Fed and everything else. So what do you two think? I think the Fed are going to do the right thing. Are they hearing me? Or are they listening to me? <laughs> are you listening? And not raise the the basis points. Not do any. They're not going to make any adjustments. Yeah. They're just going to let it go and see what happens. Yeah. I think this is going to be the first time in a long time that they're going to do that. Right. No, I I agree. I don't I don't think that they're gonna that they're gonna touch them this time. This I mean if it, they raise it ten or is ten or eleven ten straight meeting eleven straight meetings of rate 11? increases. Did they last time? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. They did. They did. Mm-hmm. So, Jerome Powell, I know you're listening. Don't raise the rate. Do the right thing. Do yeah, the right do the right thing. thing. <laughs> I'm not sure if this strategy will be for you, Jerome, but don't raise the key interest rate. I think that's, <laughs> right. the, that, that's the way to look at this here. So, a lot to unpack. This is going to be a quiet week. So, we're going to get here next week on the show. We're, we're just going to be kind of waiting and seeing what's happening with the Fed. There's not a whole lot of data coming out. So, it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. My hope is rates calm down a little bit. The advice I have is the rate's going to be the rate, and we'll talk about this on the third segment when we talk about the loser mentality in the marketplace here. I, this article got me very excited when I when I posted it. So we'll be right back. Broke down the market for you here. This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. When you're getting a mortgage, you shouldn't have to sacrifice great service just to get a great rate. At Mortgage America, we've been lending with this philosophy for over 35 years. We have access to great low rates without the complications and delays of big or online banks. We're a local Pennsylvania lender with loan officers that you can actually meet. As PHFA's number one lender, we specialize in all residential mortgage programs, including first-time buyer programs and low down payment options. For your free pre-approval, call us at 610-439-8000 or apply online at mymortgageamerica.com. Mortgage America is equal to the MLS one the Tom Tool Sales Group is the number one REMAX team in Pennsylvania with over $165 million in volume for 2021. I'm Tom Tool, and our team has achieved that kind of success by being a great place to work with and to work for. No one knows Greater Philly better than we do. We know real estate, but more importantly, we're real people. We hire the best agents, and we give them all the tools to succeed. Even our brand new agents sell 17 to 24 homes a year because our team delivers the best experience in real estate. 
Teams deliver a better experience than individuals, and we're a top 1% real estate team in the country. We call it AAA service. We're your advocate, ally, and advisor. Because this isn't a transaction to us. It's a relationship. If you're buying or selling a home, call the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX main line at 610-692-6976 or visit TomTool.com. That's Tom, Tool with an E, dot com. Sell your home for more, and remember the real estate golden rule. You always get more when you work with Tom Tool. For the best local mortgage service and great rates on your money, look no further than Mortgage America. We've been operating in the greater Philadelphia area for 40 years with a focus on smooth, easy access to home purchasing. Whether you're a first-time buyer, upsizing or downsizing, or just refinancing, we have programs for you. We also have closing cost assistance programs and access to subsidized interest rates. Pre-approval is free, no costs or commitments. To learn more, visit our website at mymortgageamerica.com or give us a call at 610-439-8000. We always have a person available to take your call with around-the-clock human service. Purchase your home with the personalized local service you find at Mortgage America. Mortgage America is an equal housing lender. NMLS 128501. Have you considered a career in real estate? Do you want control over your income? Whether you have a license or not, call us today at 610-692-6976 or visit TomTool.com. Join our team, the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax main line welcome back to tool time real estate radio on wwdb 860 am i'm tom tool she's sarah time and she's stacy mitchell and we've got nick behind the camera and we all work at the tom tool sales group at remax main line the number one remax team in pennsylvania since 2018 number 11 in the country And we're streaming live every single week on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look up Tom Tool Sales Group. And if you can go on YouTube and maybe give us a follow or subscribe, we would love that as we drop tons of local content there on a weekly basis. And maybe mention in the comments what you think the Fed's going to do next week. So with that, we've got some more portal wars here. This is uh, Mike Delpreet, who is uh, one of the tech sort of observers, commenters in the real estate space. He wrote a really interesting article as CoStar is set to get rid of the HomeSnap brand this year and transition to Homes.com. So how often do you ladies use HomeSnap? Every day. All the time. See, I, I, this, I, I must have missed the boat on this because, and I'm, I'm obviously still act, like I've actively sold real estate recently, but it seems like it was something that, you know, the past three, four years re- really caught on. So what do you like about the HomeSnap app before we talk about the rest of this here? It's very user friendly. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, I took to it like it was so easy. So that's saying something right there. Right. <laughs> me too. Me too. So um, so what what do you like about it? Like it's user friendly. Like Tell the, me more. All the documents that you would find in like the additional documents section on the MLS are right there. Mm-hmm. You just have to click on them. Yep. Like it's you can open not, them up. Yep, you can you open can them up. Email them. Yep. You don't have to go into some other like it doesn't shoot you out to like some other place. There's no additional like login to get it. It's like yep. you go into the property. The app doesn't make you log in every time that you like go right. to get into it. It's just there. It's like, open. Every yep. once in a while, I'll remember to like update it and then mm-hmm. cool. But like it's and you can schedule showing right there you can schedule showings right in it you can get to all the documents you can Mm -hmm. scroll through and see like it does comps for you Mm -hmm. for like other properties like right around there the property lines oh it shows you that yeah Wait, now have you done the walk the property thing with it no there's like so i i didn't successfully do it but um you know you can go in and you can click on like the map for like where your property lines are Mm -hmm. right and it'll show, you can see where you are, you can see like where the house is, but sometimes it's still a little tricky. Like sometimes property lines are pretty like, all right, obviously it's going to be along this tree line or like whatever. And then other times you're like, eh, I don't know. There is some feature in there that you can walk the property. And I think it's supposed to like, wow. I didn't do it uh, accurately. So like maybe that, <laughs> maybe that's a little bit of a fluke, but I think there's a way to like, while you're out there, be able to identify exactly where the property lines are. So if I can figure that, that out. Yeah, I'll have to look I'll probably for that figure it out that. right before they go ahead and like right. change it up. <laughs> I know. Well, I love that when you're out on, at a showing, you can just, um, you know, click on what, near me and mm-hmm. every other active mm-hmm. listing near you will come up. So you, mm-hmm. And then immediately you can say, hey, why don't we go see this one here? Right. And like, oh, this one was a bus. Let's the, check right. out this one. Yeah. And then also it will show you uh, what's pending, what's under contract. Mm-hmm. So you yep. have all that information right in front of you. Right. And it's just, it's all right there. Like mm-hmm. it's so 
and right, consolidate like even, it. Even I can't mess it up. You it's know? so easy. Because like so many of the different tech things, like, and I feel like such like an old woman. Because I'm always like, I don't know how this works. But like, um, it's so easy. You're yeah. almost 20 years younger than the average realtor. So don't consider yourself an old woman, number one. Um, <laughs> when it comes to tech. <laughs> well, that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Um, so, so you both like it is what yeah. I'm hearing. Yeah. Yes. So here's why this gets interesting. Because I haven't heard the agent community respond to an app like this i I, it was i I just wanted to kind of shut up and let you guys talk about here's why we like home snap because it does make the agent job easier i've heard this from so many people so at the end of 2020 costar purchased home snap for 250 million bucks um and now what is going to happen um costar also bought homes.com for 156 million and decided to make homes.com its dominant consumer brand um and that's now changed, and they are going to kind of take the Home Snap Agent app. The Home Snap Pro app is going to be remained, renamed Homes Pro. So they're not getting rid of the app. Um, what I see here is that CoStar is getting a website and an app ready for agents and consumers to use, similar to Zillow, who has the Zillow Premier Agent app, which we all use. I know that one pretty well. It doesn't have the same information when you're at a showing. It's basically just contact info. It's more for Zillow's use, I find, than anyone else. Mm-hmm. And obviously, they have Zillow gets 75% of all the consumer web traffic. So we've got this move happening from CoStar, which I find really interesting. And then you look at what Mike Del Preet had to say. So he talks about his portal wars, the portal wars, excuse me, and. You know, talking about why this matters because we're, they're looking at, you know, if you look at the, this is at the end of May, the average amount of monthly unique users for Zillow in Q1 of 2023 is over 200 million. Homes.com is less than 50 million. And then you have Realtor and Redfin are both kind of in between. They're in like that, it looks like Realtor is it maybe. Let's call it seventy-five million based on this chart. There's not any numbers on here. Redfin is just less than fifty million. So there's obviously a big gap to make up. And if you look at what happened from the fourth quarter to the first quarter, Zillow added fourteen million unique monthly users. Realtor and Redfin averaged six, but Homes added seven. So obviously they're trying to drive a little more traffic there. And this also comes in light of David Doctorow, who was the um, CEO of Realtor.com stepped down. So obviously things, you know, that's never good when the CEO steps down. So is this where CoStar makes their push in the portal game? Is this where they look to maybe engage with agents a little more uniquely? Because that's always been their claim. We're going to support agents a lot more than Zillow does. How do you see this playing out with these? There's a couple of chess pieces that have been moved on the board here. Dr. Rose out. Realorder.com, I think, is having some issues in terms of you know lead delivery and what they're promising agents. Zillow's been kind of zillowing along the entire time. And now you've got Homes.com, who was bought by CoStar. They're merging in an app that has a high user base. Do we see this making a dent in Zillow's share of eyeballs on the Internet? I don't think so. I think um, like Zillow's like Zillow is Amazon, you know, like Zillow is the name. That's what you go to. Now, a lot of people that are on Zillow are also on other sites. So maybe um, maybe people and how many apps do you want to be on? How many like Mm -hmm. platforms do you want to be using at at any given time? So maybe Homes takes some from these other companies. But I think that people are always still going to be on Zillow for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I think, I mean, but Zillow is like, yeah, you know, like you said, it's Google, Amazon, yeah. it's a household name. Um, but homes, if they can make this super user friendly, mm-hmm. like it is, yeah, easier than Zillow and more updated information. Like mm-hmm. Zillow right. has, yeah, their stuff's not correct all the time. Right, right. <laughs> uh, which can Th- be their an issue. Taxes are constantly wrong. Yes. Property taxes are almost always wrong on Zillow. Yeah. yeah. So I think if homes can make it, very user friendly. They have a shot here. I wonder what the client facing like app would look like. Mm-hmm. You know, like I w- would they be able to provide things like sellers disclosures to like just straight. Well, to so the, the app, the app's going to remain the same. So oh, it's going to be called good. the Homes Pro app instead of Home Snap Pro. Yeah. So that's perfect for, for professionals. So 
Uh, you know, my question is, are they going to be able to drive the same kind of traffic to their site? I mean, that's what makes Zillow valuable mm. is, is, the, is that they, they, they just dominate this. I mean, it's not even close when you look at this chart from Mike Delpreet. And you're, I mean, D- David Doctorow doesn't step down if things are going well at Realtor. I mean, that's just that that's my view on this. So, you know, home. I mean, you look at Homes.com. I mean, I think it, it, they, they, they have agents much more forward facing. The first thing they have is an agent directory on there. Then they have start collaborating. So collaborate with your agent during the home buying process. Zillow doesn't operate that way. So that's where I, I, I do see Homes.com as a viable option for agents to, you know, play the portal game if that's what you're going to do. Uh, but it's, I don't know if consumers are going to adopt the same way because you know what consumers care about seeing properties they want to buy. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think with, um, you know, the first app I go to is not Zillow. I go to my home snap. So for me as an agent, it's, I'll probably just flow right into homes.com. Um, I mean like for like looking something up on the go. Yes. Yeah. But I think, I mean, for us, it doesn't seem like it's going to change much. Right. Good. Don't change it. I, I know, right? I like I it. Was, I got two emails in, in about this. Okay. The first was like, home snaps going away. They're Sunday. And I was like, oh. No. You know, it's like, right. It's like, oh, my gosh, you're kidding me. Right. And then the second one's like, oh, no, it's fine. No oh. no, pro- no worries. We're just going to change Just a different name. You'll yeah. still have yeah. your home snap. So, yeah. you know, it went from like, oh, my gosh, to yay. Yeah. Um, so that's how much I use this app. Right. More so than Zillow. Right. I mean, I would say 90% of the things out there, if it was like, oh, this got taken away or this got changed, I'd be like, whatever. Like, right. Home this one, is the one that yes. like, I'm like, no. Right. <laughs> I like Exa- you. I, I agree 100%. <laughs> so I think for agents, it's it's um, it's very important. But for consumers, they yeah, yeah it's not for them. So yeah. I think Zillow, I mean, right. they're just the, the winner all the way around yeah. as far as consumers and agents, I guess. Right. So what you know, Mike Del Preet says is that Zillow has increased its commanding lead over realorder.com during the previous year, hence Dr. O getting the boot. Um, and it's a reflection of the overall market and the changing consumer behavior rather than anything within Z- Zillow or realorder.com's direct control. And during a hot housing market with limited inventory, consumers spend more time on multiple porters just uh, in, but the, in a, in a cooling market with less people moving, consumers are simplifying their casual searches on just one portal, which I found pretty interesting. Um, then he talks about Homes.com and uh, the Q1 growth of seven million unique monthly users did not come cheap. They spent 112 million CoStar across all of its consumer properties during the quarter, including an increase of 55 million primarily for SEM advertising of their residential brands. That means search engine marketing is basically buying traffic. So um, so what's playing out isn't unique, but it's kind of an example of what's going to happen with some of these dominant portals here. So you know, Zillow's position is, it, it is commanding. That's a really great word. Um, I don't think there's going to be a meaningful change. Neither does Mike Del Preet, Sarah, so you, you and him agree. Um, and he says it's not even a war. Zillow already won. So is this a situation where CoStar is just spending money to try to – now, see, if I was them, I'd be going after Realtor and Redfin. Forget Zillow. Um, I heard this from Howard Stern, right, fellow radio broadcaster, right? And, and, <laughs> but uh, he would always – in all seriousness, I mean, whatever you want to think about the guy, he came in and dominated local markets, and he never wanted to go to the best stations – he wanted to go to the worst station and make them respectable. And I yeah. think that I think that's the move here with this is you could take homes.com and maybe beat Realtor, yeah. beat Redfin. I don't think you're ever going to beat Zillow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, could these moves that they're making – wait, did they come out and say they're trying to beat Zillow? Or could these moves that they're making currently and the money they're throwing at it to be to beat these, like, smaller fish? So, I mean, I know what Andy Florence has said. That's their CEO. And we, we've talked about it on the show here. Um, so let me just pull up the comments verbatim because um, he's been he's been pretty adamant about um, coming out against Zillow. So um, he said that they hijack listings. This was in October of 2021. Uh, I mean, he's, he's been pretty critical of Zillow. And um, it's, you know, he said that it just because they're they're hijacking listings um, and, and they, you know, he, he's basically, you know, basically declared war on them. I mean, he, he specifically said again, quote, that feels like the guy who comes by your corner shop from their mafia and says, you wouldn't like a fire, would you? 
<laughs> that's pretty. I mean, that's pretty aggressive. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, I now maybe this is all a smokescreen. Maybe he's playing smart CEO politics and going after the other people. I don't really know. That's what I would recommend. I think the other yeah. two companies are way more vulnerable than Zillow right now. Yeah. And if you just add up that traffic that's there, right? So let's go back to the. Um, you got to pull. So I mean, w- w- let me like, get the numbers here. Oh, I'm just kind of flipping around. The um, monthly users. Yeah, monthly yeah. users. Yeah. So I mean, six million on Realtor, six million on Redfin. Yeah, but if you, if you take the combination, right? So it looks right. like they're around like seventy five and fifty. And let's say he's at twenty five. Well, seventy five and fifty is what one twenty. I mean, that gets you at one hundred fifty million. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think I, I I'm clear that's the better yeah. strategy here. Eat, eat these guys and then kind of mm-hmm. grow up to be like almost there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think that's where you can where you can take more market share because uh, once you give up market share, you never get it back. So I think that that that's the place where to where to look for it. So on that note, any other closing thoughts here? Just don't take away our home yeah. snap. Don't you take our app. <laughs> like it. All right. Well, right. I mean, that, that, that's certainly relevant there because you got to get agent buy-in. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the CEO of United Wholesale Mortgage, the owner of the Phoenix Suns. So he's done well. He's bought a, he's bought a basketball team. Matt, i got to look up how to pronounce this. Ishbia, we're going to call it, talks about the loser mentality in the marketplace right now. We'll be right back on Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB, 860 AM. You shouldn't have to deal with all the red tape when getting your mortgage from a big or online bank. At Mortgage America, we have access to big bank money, but with the personalized and detailed service of a local bank. We are here in your community and ready to serve with fast settlements, low down payment options, and first-time homebuyer programs. Pre-approval is free, no costs or commitments. For more information, visit our website at mymortgageamerica.com or give us a call at 610-439-8000. Mortgage America is I'm Tom Tool of the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax Mainline. If you're thinking of becoming a real estate agent in the greater Philly area, I have a special offer for you. Our team did $165 million of volume in 2021, making us the number one Remax team in Pennsylvania and a top 1% team nationally. Our agents love us because we offer them a successful career, a great life, and an unbeatable culture. Agents who've been with us for at least a year average 30 plus sales. Even our brand new agents average 17 to 24 sales a year. We offer proven systems and expert training. We help you set more appointments and sell more houses. Now here's the offer. If you don't have a real estate license yet, we offer real estate scholarships so you can get one for free. Check it out at realestatescholarshipprogram.com or visit the Tom Tool sales group at Remax Mainline at tomtool.com. That's Tom Tool with an E dot com. Get more out of your real estate career and remember the real estate golden rule. You always get more when you work with Tom Tool. Have you considered a career in real estate? Do you want control over your income? Whether you have a license or not, call us today at 610-692-6976 or visit TomTool.com. Join our team, the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax Mainline. When you're getting a mortgage, you shouldn't have to sacrifice great service just to get a great rate. At Mortgage America, we've been lending with this philosophy for over 35 years. We have access to great low rates without the complications and delays of big or online banks. We're a local Pennsylvania lender with loan officers that you can actually meet. As PHFA's number one lender, we specialize in all residential mortgage programs, including first-time buyer programs and low down payment options. For your free pre-approval, call us at 610-439-8000 or apply online at mymortgageamerica.com. All right, all right. Welcome back to Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacy Mitchell. She's Sarah Timon. We've got Nick behind the camera, and we all work at the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax Mainline, the number one Remax team in Pennsylvania since 2018 number 11 in the country, and we are streaming live every week on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look up Tom Tool Sales Group and make sure to subscribe and follow. So I love when articles like this come out. It just punches you right in the face, which is my kind of style, and it tells people, in all seriousness, you guys are laughing. I think you know me well enough to know this is what people need to hear right now. I might have chosen different words. Matt Ishbia, we looked up the pronunciation, the... Um, CEO of United Wholesale Mortgage came out and said specifically this. That's a people who are losers mentality. 
when talking about the surging rates, lack of housing inventory, and the monetary and policy pressures that we're seeing. Quote, that's a people who are losers mentality. And those people I don't like being associated with, Ishbia says. And then he goes on and say, we recognize what reality is, but it's also about mindset. We think we're winning now. And he's expecting that the wholesale channel should reach that he has for his mortgage company should reach a 33% market share by 2026 compared to the current level of 22%. Um, He recently purchased the Phoenix Suns. So obviously he's doing something right. And he goes on to talk about his, some of his competitors, but how many times have you heard agents, mortgage lenders, title, and all the vendors involved, they're complaining about rates, inventory, or policy? How many times have you heard it? One? Uh, two? <laughs> Countless. <laughs> yeah. A thousand? Uh, more. Right? It's like that, it's like that quote. That mm-hmm. I forget who that is. So do, do you really think that's a loser mentality? No, I mean, I think what, yes, I think that you need to have um, a positive attitude and be able to like, like those are, those things are going on. Like, how can you still get transactions done? How can you still help out your clients? How can you still move forward? I mean, I think recognizing that those things exist and are being talked about and are to like, to a a degree, certainly an issue. um, I think being aware of them, but then knowing uh, what you can do to get around that and to still, because deals are still going to get done, how can you be the one that helps your clients do it? Right. I mean, when the market was insane in 2020 and 20, yeah, in 2020, people were still complaining that I can't oh my get God, my yeah. offer accepted, blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, like people will just complain. Oh, yeah. About everything. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, you know. This, the parge is too hot. The parge is too cold. Yeah. They're just waiting for the parge to be just right. Well, guess what? Not in this business. Right. It's never just right. There's right. always challenges. Yeah. Even in the boom of, you know, 2020 when well, you then know, it people was, wanted to buy everything. Right. Well, and then it was also like having to go, and we're still having to, in many cases, go above listing yes. price. But like the degree mm-hmm. to which you had to do that, and that was new then like now right. people are a little bit more accustomed right i think to that being the case and understanding that like oftentimes the listing price is just the starting point that doesn't mean that that's what it's going to go for or should go for you mm-hmm. know like that's just where they're like starting it off at right um but having to go as high over at that point was i think pretty new for a lot of people yes um and then i mean that's you couldn't get people past that with the good news of rates being historically low you know right. like and now it's the right you know what i mean so like there's always something there's always something and there's always going to be something right it's right the nature of this business right and so, the world and the world like every there's day there's always going to be something there's something you know you're trying yeah. to get somewhere and you're behind a trash truck or right you know what i mean there's always always something so right. are you a glass half full kind of person or are you a glass half empty kind of person right what is your mindset right do you automatically look at the negatives of things because if you do it's it's a long hard lifetime <laughs> right, right. Yes. just constantly look at it negatives like i like to try to solve the problems and and look at the 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 optimistic mm-hmm. part of it um but that's just how i like to function because I think that you can find good in everything. Right. Well, and as like a client, if you're if you're looking to go out and buy a home and all you're hearing from your agent is like, yeah, it sucks right now. You know, mm-hmm. like how mm-hmm. are you going to like you're looking to them for the like motivation to keep going and the tips and the tricks of like what they what is in their control? Because mm-hmm. there's certainly a lot that is not. So like what can we control here? How can we, you know. Mm-hmm. still move forward. How can we get them to their goals? What are right. their goals? Right. Let's see. Let's sit down and talk about how we can get you there. Right. Because there's ways. Yeah. Because guess what? We've gotten a lot of people right. into homes mm-hmm. this year. And right. there's plenty plenty more work to do on that too. Like we said earlier, it took a global pandemic to drop rates as low as they went. And um, we mentioned uh, Jeff Mays, our, our team's coach, earlier on the call. And I'll, I'll double down on something he said yesterday when I saw him was that the agents that want to flourish, that don't want to have this loser mindset, this loser mentality, because I, I think there is something to the, the people that bitch and complain. Like, I mean, it's there, there's always something that's not going to work your way in the marketplace or any career or any job, period. So this isn't just isolated to real estate. This is the time to be awesome. And the best agents are made in markets like this where they're a little challenging. 
mean, look how many agents have gotten out of the business that, that you know that got licensed in 2020, 2021, or last year and thought it was going to be easy. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's a real challenge for folks. And, you know, wh- where you're having to nurture leads. I mean, we talked about case studies today at our team meeting. I mean, it was, it was nine months, 12 months. You had one a couple years that it took you that you just recently uh, worked with in Westchester. I mean, mm-hmm. that, I think it was like the first call you ever got, yeah. literally. Um, so it's the time for agents that want to succeed. It's their time to be awesome. And some things you can say is when someone gives you this objection, hey, this is my job. I do this all the time, right? That's going to inspire confidence. It's not going to say it's easy. It's not right. going to say these are great market conditions. It's I know how to deal with this. I know what I'm doing. Um that's easy. I can answer that question. When you inspire that confidence, the leads get better when you get better, right? I mean, and I, I think that there's something to be said here. I mean, the, the message is pretty – this is a punchy in the, in the face message, and, and, and I like it. Um, and then he talks about in here that – and there's a lot of people saying the same thing, that this is like that valley of death. So they talk about valleys of death with like startup companies, right, where it's like the, you get a great idea, you get some momentum, and then it gets really tough. It's like the dip effect that um, – Seth Godin talks about, and we've all gone through it. I know, I know, I have in real estate where you get started, and then it gets like really hard, and you have like a couple wins at the beginning, and then you don't realize how hard it's going to be, and then you're like right about to break through, and that's where a lot of people quit, and they don't they 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 don't quit quick quick enough. They quit too late. So, with all that in mind, I think there's this dip right now for a lot of people when you can work through that, and that it, it you know 2024 he he's expecting it to be a really strong year. I tend to agree with that if rates come down a little bit, which a lot of people are talking about. We're going to see rates come down in the next 6, 12 months once the economy settles in and if we can hit that 2% inflation target. And I see 2024, 2025, and 2026. He's thinking they're going to be the best three mortgage years in history because everyone that's doing 6.5% and 7 right now is going to need to refinance, which I, I agree with. And if rates come down that low, you're going to see the inventory get unlocked of all those sellers that are saying, all right, I know I got a three and a half and I'm okay with going to five because this house isn't right for me anymore. And it's still costing me money to maintain it that I don't want to spend. Um, I'm okay with trading up to a five or maybe I'll I'll buy the rate down a little bit with some of the profits that I've made. Mm -hmm. There's options out there and, you know, surging mortgage rates, it's one challenge. Inventory is another. And, you know, that, that the people that think the market's never going to recover, that's who he's calling the, the ones that have the loser mentality. So what do you think about his predictions here for the next three, four years in real estate? I like his predictions. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> good, good. I think it's great. And you know what? It, it does make sense. If the interest rates were to go back down into the fives, mm-hmm. I, I mean, just off the top of my head, you know, I know people who would be jumping back in. Right. Right. Um, and, and they rightfully so they should, yeah. you know, I don't think they should be sitting out now, but because the home prices are not mm-hmm. going to be coming down, mm-hmm. but I understand, you know, the, about the interest rates. So if they do come down into the fives, it's, it's just going to be a boom. Yeah. Well, and it would also make sense for that to line up for like 2026 or like not like 2024. Like, I mean, I know he's saying they're going to change there, but for mm-hmm. people to start re- like refinancing because that it does cost money to do that. It's not yes. like, oh, whatever you want, you just you just refi and then you get your discount. Like there are closing costs. Like there right. are fees that go along with it. So if you just settled on a home this year, like they, unless if they really took like a plunge, like mm-hmm. probably next year, like you know you've just spent a lot of money getting into the home. That might not be the right time. But by year like two, three, four if they continue to go down, like that's where it might really make sense and it might be a good opportunity for you to go in and do it. And then absolutely, um, that'll unlock things. And uh, yeah, maybe people will yep. make some moves. Well, I, 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 I'm I clear that's what's holding people back right now. Because yeah. I mean, if you got a, got a three and a half going to a seven, mm-hmm. like that, I mean, you're doubling the payment, yeah. right? I mean, so, you know, think about, I don't know what rates everyone has here. We don't need to get into that. But think about you're in a house and- Let's say you're downsizing, right? And your payment's $5,000 a month at three and a half. Well, what if it's $5,000 a month and you're going to a smaller home? That's right. tough for people yeah. to swallow right, right now. Yeah. And until the until things calm down, and, and I, I see the calming happening. Like, this, it, the Fed doesn't raise rates next week. That's step one. 
hopefully the government can get their act together and not just kick the can down the road, but actually come up with a deal that's going to, because that, that, I think that's why the rates haven't come down. As my, I was really clear. I, I, I was, I said on the show, I thought we were going to see six and a half when they reached the deal. That didn't happen uh, yet. We'll see. So the, the more, and the, what he talks about here with this loser mentality is there's still going to be people that transact. And if you can find them and they're saying, you know what, I'm okay transacting, knowing all this information, or you're educating folks the right way. I mean, how um, did anyone have the light bulb go off when Kevin, Kyle, and DJ from Mortgage America talked about the PHFA pricing on loans today at our team meeting that are coming in like high Five. fives, low sixes? Yeah. Now, you have to find homes that maybe have been on the market a little longer mm-hmm. and maybe identify something that's a little overpriced and, and try to negotiate. You can't have it both ways. You can't get the you know, the home that's, you know, priced right and ready to sell versus maybe you do have to deal with like a difficult seller or negotiate something, but that's another option out there. And that kind of demonstrates, I mean, people don't know this stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, that was enlightening. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, um, what did he say? They were what? 6.125. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's a great opportunity. Right. For some buyers. And yeah, honestly, yeah. Look for the inventory, um, that's been on the market for a little that's a little overpriced. That right. there's your opportunity right there. Right. And even if like the first one that you go for that would like qualify for this and whatever doesn't work out, like how many times do things just work out great the first time? You know? Like <laughs> not often. Very rarely. <laughs> so often. like it gives you another tool and another angle to like make the pieces work. If like you as the buyer, like you also do have to be willing to like put some put the time in and and mm-hmm. want to do it. But mm-hmm. if the motivation is there and the goal is is there like there's there's ways that we can do it <laughs> mm-hmm. and that's what we have to let people know like right. that's the positive message we need to bring to, right to exactly. our buyers yeah. exactly and not be like no just wait a couple of years and right because it's a terrible market well, and and that's the loser mentality <laughs> right, yeah. right? Yep. i mean someone says that to me i'm out like i'm looking for somebody else and, yeah. and you can't you can't bring that negative energy i mean it, nobody wants to work with somebody like that it's stressful enough buying a house right, right. we've all yep. bought and sold real estate sucks right yeah stressful right like you want to be given options and like a positive vibe and like that this can work and not just like well if we managed to pull this off that was a real way you know like yeah let's go <laughs> you don't need eeyore showing up to sell your house like, oh, i don't think this is gonna go well and right. you don't want your doctor to have a negative uh attitude right or a negative right. mentality oh no you want them to be positive in, right. in the face of bad news right yeah Mm-hmm. And, and there's always things you can do to control your your business in these situations. And that that's where I get uh, where, where Matt Ishpia says he doesn't want to be around those people, because if you're running a company and you have or you, you have folks that are like, I, I don't want to do that or I'm not going to do this, that that stuff gets contagious with mm-hmm. everyone else in the company. And yes. if you're not promoting, hey, here's how to win. Here's how to have a winning mentality. Here's how to do the right things. If you're not promoting that stuff and, you know, from the top down, the bottom up, whatever you want to call it, that's going to be a problem. And I would get I would argue it's probably even tougher for lenders right now than real estate agents because it's so competitive. People are ma- barely making any money on these loans and there's no refi business. Right. So yeah, that's gone. That's a whole nother factor for him. So I, I love this article. Love his mindset. Let's hope it rubs off on some people. That's it for this week's episode of Tool Time Real Estate Radio if you want to follow Sarah, she's on Instagram at Ty underscore Ty Time. That's T-Y underscore T-Y-T-I-M-E. You can follow Stacy at the number two Mitchco. You can follow me at Tom Tool 3RD. And we're streaming live every single week on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look up Tom Tool Sales Group. That's it for this week's episode. We'll be back next Tuesday on Tool Time Real Estate Radio.